let's talk a little bit about uh, your study outcomes. Okay, and why and how your fixed mindset kind of doesn't help you build your study habits, right? So, generally, as perfectionists, most fixed mindsets are perfectionists. It's part of the trait, okay? So, perfectionists, fixed mindsets. Most of us have pretty good memories. Okay, so our memory retention is really good. It's also, it's kind of natural, uh, you know, doing well at maths and science at school and accounting at school. Um, we're very good at formulaic thinking. Okay, so not so much numbers per se, but it's formulaic thinking. We're really good at pattern recognition. If this, then that. If this, then that. If this, then that, right? So we recognize patterns and stuff. And this obviously is an absolute disaster when you get to higher levels because students pick out keywords, <coughs> cough, 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 especially when it comes to manic and auditing. We pick out keywords in the case study and then we go, oh, if the question has this keyword next to that keyword, that's a trigger that says that I must use this formula. Okay, so we do, we spend a lot of time honing our skills of memory learning, formulaic thinking, pattern recognition, et cetera, et cetera. And this generally gets us through most of undergrad, okay? Because what we end up doing is we end up learning databases of solutions. So students will say to me, Ivan, but I do do questions, okay? But the question is, how do you do those questions and what are you focusing on? Now, when our understanding or our skill of studying was developed, what we ended up doing, because that was kind of the way that learning worked, that was the way that the material was presented to us and it was the way that it was examined, what we could do, pretty much, was do three or four questions and question number five would kind of look very similar to questions one to four. So when we did questions, we weren't so much problem solving. We weren't really starting from scratch. What we were doing, we were adding that particular solution and question to the database in our head. So because we're really good with memory, we're like, if I do four questions, I remember the problem and the solution, the problem and the solution, the problem and the solution. And in undergrad, what happens is you're able to get through by matching the problem in the exam to a solution from the database that you learn. Now it's really tricky not to do this because this comes naturally to us, okay? So it's like saying, you know, you can't think the way that you do. Yeah, but I do, that's, like, <laughs> that's how I think, right? Because you're really good at this, because you've honed your skills, because this is the way that we do things, we are naturally really good at memory. We can't unremember something. Okay? But understand that most of your learning through school, because unfortunately that's the way that school material is designed, and through most of university is done on a basis of memorizing patterns, memorizing a database of solutions, and in an exam, what we're doing is we're picking a solution from the database and we're matching it to the exam. Okay. If you have ever come out of an exam or people around you have come out of the exam, and said things like, that didn't look like any previous questions I've done, okay? Guaranteed, most of us at some point in time have made the statement or we know students who have. That question in the exam didn't look like anything in our study material, it wasn't fair. Couldn't do the question because it didn't look like any of the past questions. Um, it's not the same as any of the past questions, why? because you're used to learning the database of solutions, okay? So if you find yourself talking about like, but I couldn't come up with that because it didn't look like anything else, then you generally know that's what you're doing. If, <laughs> um, if you have a habit of misreading the question, chances are this is your problem as well, okay? So if you're the type of person who, you know, you, you, you think the test went well, you think the exam went well, and then you come back and you failed it or you didn't do quite as well, and you look and you go, what earth was I thinking? Like the, the lecturer or I look at it and I go, but this wasn't even 
like I wasn't even answering the question, like the question asked for this and I gave that something else. If you're misreading, chances are the reason is because you were so busy looking for triggers and so busy looking for keywords to match and pull out the database of the answer that you weren't actually thinking. Okay, so our process of learning, our understanding of what studying is, our understanding of studying outcome to a large extent is built around learning a database of solutions which is also why we have a tendency to check the memo and because our fixed mindset focuses and spends more time and emphasizes the importance of the answer. Okay? The answer is what's important, not the process. The answer is important. And so therefore, it makes complete sense to keep focusing, build, and get as many answers as possible. Okay? Unfortunately, as we get further in our studies, what no one tells us is that we move and the exams move from a position or they move from an expectation where you will have the answer when you read the question to a place where you need to build an answer from nothing. Somewhere in your studies, in a lot of cases, students experience this between third year and CTA, and more and more as third year starts shifting, and it definitely is, no question, more and more as third year starts shifting to meet CTA, this is like happening in third year, okay? We feel, and we have always been okay, and we have felt that when I read the question, the answer will kind of pop into my head. Why? Because I've learned a database of solutions and that's how it's always worked. So when I read a question, I should have the answer in my head. It's kind of like saying, if I say to you, give me the answer to two plus two. When you say to me, Von, the answer's four, you're not thinking about it. You just, you have the answer. You've done it so many times, you've seen it so many times, you have the answer. So you kind of go into exams expecting that the way that you should be prepared for exams is to be able to look at the question and have the answer in your head. In reality, as you get to higher levels, the examiners, the design of the exam is going, no, 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 no. In the professional world, what we need you to be able to do is build an answer from nothing. I need you to be able to take an unseen, completely new, uncertain scenario and create a solution from nothing. We are not okay with that. Okay? It would be the difference between saying two plus two or solve this. Two plus two minus four plus six divided by five minus three divided by eight to the power of two. Okay? Do you have the answer in your head? Probably not. Can you build an answer? Yes, you can. Why? Well, because we all understand that there's a methodology, there's a process that you follow in order to solve maths problems, bod maths, order of operation. If I follow the process, I will be able to build an answer. This is where shit falls apart for us because we don't understand and nobody tells us that the days of having an answer are gone. You are not expected to get into an exam and have an answer. No, I expect that you get into an exam, I expect that you have a process, that you have a methodology of creating an answer, some kind of answer from nothing. And hey presto, is it any surprise that the difference between these two is a focus on the result versus a focus on the process? Oh, surprise, surprise, as fixed mindsets, we are very happy with results-driven stuff and we don't see the value of the process, which is why. Every time I lecture anything, 
the student will put their hand up. If they ask, they will go, how did you get to the answer? Where's the answer? And I go, no, back off. Let's talk about the methodology for answering questions. No, I don't want to focus on the method. I want the answer. Yvonne, how did you get to the five? And this is especially true in costing and manner because it's all about the process, but we don't value process. We don't want to build a methodology. We want a formula to get to the answer and it must work every time. It must be the same. It must always be the same. If it's not the same, we're not okay with it, okay? So building, creating, process-driven, uncertain, new, unseen, we don't like. It is completely counterintuitive. It is against our nature. It doesn't speak to our strengths, okay? And this is why we don't like manic. 90% of students who fail CTA fail manic. It is not a coincidence, okay? It is completely counterintuitive. Manic requires a bunch of skills that us as fixed mindset perfectionists do not have. It is totally counterintuitive. We don't understand. It does not, comp like, does not compute. As a perfectionist, I have certain strengths, okay? And they lie towards the types of things where FNAC and tax are. Format-driven, process-driven, it's very complicated, a lot of detail, very complex, numbers driven, et cetera, et cetera, but it works. It's formulaic, format driven. I can remember the stuff, that's there. Details, thorough, et cetera, et cetera. Manac, fuck knows what's going on there. Whole bunch of guidelines, if this, but maybe it could be that, and you could also do it some other way, like what the hell? Give me the rules. Why doesn't the rule work? If I see this, why aren't I using that? Why don't you just tell me what formula you wanted for heaven's sake? Why must I figure this out myself? Okay, so there's a reason that we struggle with this stuff and all of it comes back to our fixed mindset, which is heavily focused on the answer, the result, as opposed to emphasizing the process. The process being problem solving. Problem solving is a skill. It's a skill. We're not okay with skills, okay? We want answers, okay? Skills take time to build. We don't have time. We also don't value that time for reasons that we've already discussed, right? So problem solving, everyone, especially men, like we know, uh, is supposed to work on problem solving, but we don't work on problem solving. We don't. We work on, if I've done enough questions and I've learned what the solution should look like, if the question looks like that, the solution should look like that. That's what we've learned to do. The idea of presenting a completely unseen, new, weird, strange problem and going, oh, what? where does this come from? That is something that we're not good at. We don't like it. It doesn't make sense to us. 